Okay, law of cosines. Law of cosines, part two, right? Part two. All right, you can pause it here, copy this down in your notes. Uh, you're going to see the standard form, which is actually what you learned in the first part, right? Part one. And then you're going to see how they derive the second part, which is the alternative form. Okay, pause it, copy it down when you're ready. Here we go. Okay. So what do I know? Well, the first one, the ones that we learned to solve for size, remember it was... One of them was a squared is equal to what? The other two, b squared plus c squared minus 2 times bc cosine of a. And actually from that one, if you just imagine that you, since this is a negative 2bc cosine, it's all together, right? Because essentially they're going to solve for a, so you can find cosine. So just imagine all this piece goes to that side which means this will be b squared plus c squared, and then the a squared, so minus a squared. So long story short, they're solving for cosine a, um, and I'm just going to give you the formula. You don't have to worry about how they solved it, but it's going to be, I mean, they just get it from here. It's going to be from this, they derive this, cosine a to find an angle, right? So now, this one you use for sides, which is the one we learned first. This was part one. Part two is this one, this side over here. And now they're actually just taking this formula and getting the angle alone by itself. So cosine A will be what? B squared plus C squared. Right, they left this here. They moved the A squared to the A, so that's minus A squared. And then divided by what? 2BC. And now you're going to use this. These are the new formulas here to find the angle measures. Okay. And the same thing is true for uh, to find if it's angle A, if it's angle B. Well, remember that's the one that's B squared is equal to what? A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine of B. All right, positive you need to. But again, for that, they're using the same formula. They're, sol they're solving for cosine B, so you're going to get cosine of B is equal to A squared plus C squared minus B squared over 2AC. All right, that's B, or to find angle B. And obviously, lastly, is the C squared. C squared is equal to what? Well, if we're looking for the sides, it's C squared is equal to B squared plus, oh, I should have put A squared first. Ah. It doesn't matter, but A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of C, right? That was to find if I want to find side C, right? If, if you have one angle. But now from that, if now the problems we're doing now, they're going to give you no angles. You're going to get no angles. You're going to know three sides. And from there, they solve for cosine C. So that'll be cosine of C is equal to A squared plus B squared minus C squared over 2AB. Yeah. Okay, so these are the ones you're going to use. You're going to use those four finding angles. All right. All right, let's look at number one. So th these, are the, these are the formulas here. When do you use these? When do you use these? When you have no angles. You're not even going to have one angle. All right, so here we go. Problem number one. It's going to look like this. Number one. Find the measure of angle B, right? And again, if the triangle is not labeled ABC, well, then change it, label it ABC, and that way we're sticking to these formulas. Okay, so 
triangle is going to look like this. That's going to be 17. That's going to be 18. And this side's going to be 30. See, there's side measures. There's no angle measures. I got all the sides. I got all the sides. This, remember, law of cosines, you use when you only know one angle or no angles. When you have one angle or no angles, that's when you use uh, law of sines. Um, so this is the one where we have no angles. We're trying to find angle B. And which one's B? Well, this one's B. B, this one's A, this one's C. Okay, so we're trying to find uh, this angle right here, angle B. I don't know what it is. Okay, so what's the one we're going to use? This one here, right? Let's copy that one down. That's going to be, uh, let me zoom out. That's going to be cosine of B is equal to a squared plus c squared minus b squared over 2ac, right? You don't have to memorize these formulas. Just know when to use them. Just know how to use them. That's it. All right, so we just got to substitute everything in. Obviously, we're not going to know that. That's what we're trying to find. Which one is side A? Right, these are all just the sides. A is the 30, B is the 18. You might want to write that over here before you get all mixed up. A is 30, B is uh, what? 18, and C is 17. Maybe that's a good idea. All right, so here we go. Let's substitute everything and just do this. The rest is calculator driven. That'll be cosine of B is equal to what? A squared, that's 30 squared plus 17 squared, right? That's C, 17 squared minus 18 squared. Again, it's just formulas, guys. Over 2 times 30, which is A, times C, which is 17. I mean, that's it. It's just using a formula. 30 squared, I know it's 900, but let me just... 30 squared is 900. 900 plus 17 squared is, uh, I don't know, 529 or something, 329. I don't know, 17 squared. Oh, 289. Well, there you go. I was wrong. 289. Right? Use a calculator. Minus 18 squared is, I don't know, 324. Got to add these two, get that number, subtract that. And then 2 times 30 times 17 well 2 times 30 is 60 times 17 i got 10 20. all right when i do the top and add this and subtract this 900 plus 289 equals that minus 324 is equal to i get 865 over 10 20. So now, I mean, you can either get this, right? You got to do the inverse, right? Remember how to find the angle measures? We got to do the inverse, right? We can't divide by cosine, so we take the inverse of both sides. So that means that B is going to be the cosine inverse of 865 over 1020. And if you're going to try to do this in one shot on the calculator... Um, let's see if I could do it here. For me, I get to, I get to actually activate the cosine inverse. For those of you that can't, and you're supposed to do this part first, then you're actually going to have to get the decimal for, let's see, 865 divided by 1020 is equal to 0. 0.84803.92. Okay, but let me do it this way first. Cosine inverse of... 865 divided by 10, 20, close the parentheses, equals, and I get an angle of 32 degrees. 
32 degrees. All right, that is correct. So my answer for B is 32 degrees. That's what I got. And you got an angle. Okay. And now this is what I'm telling you. See, since I have all the sides, once I have an angle, they don't, I don't have to use law of cosines and get it. I don't have to use law of cosines this one to get another angle. Now that I have an angle on the side, I can use law of sines to get another angle. I could solve this whole triangle. But let me show you this other way real quick with the calculator. Remember I said right here at this point, um, if you have the other calculator that works backward, get this decimal value first, right? So 865 divided by 1020 is equal to 0.8480392. Remember that, 0.8480392. So then you would do 0 0.8480, what was it, 392? Oh, what the, why did I do that? And see, it'll still get you the 32, right? Remember when you, I probably typed it in wrong. Cosine inverse of point, I forgot what it was. What was it? 865 divided by, see? Point 0.848039, got it. Cosine inverse point 0.848039. Why don't I why don't I get that? Why don't I put a zero here? Okay. There it is. 32 degrees. All right. So watch out what those numbers don't run off too much. 32 degrees. That's it guys. Just a formula. Easy money. All right. Good luck.